Um, I was a member of the Durham University Himalayan Expedition, which came to be based in Langtang in 1976 through to June 1977. So we arrived in the April. We were given a rental of the headman's uh, old house underneath the cliff, just behind the only house that remained uh, in Langtang after the earthquake. It was a very safe place. Um, and we were doing research for the United Nations Wildlife and Conservation Project um, as part of the research for the Langtang uh, National Park Management Plan. So originally there was a lot of distrust about our presence in Langtang, but through talking with people and learning the language, we were able to win the trust of a lot of the Langtang people and they were very helpful. Um, and we ended up um, writing the management plan for the government uh, and we were all volunteers. We had raised the money for the expedition ourselves uh, and we are a combination of ecologists and geographers. It's devastating. Absolutely devastating. I think it's really good because it doesn't, it, it can't hide anything. And I think I returned in 2008 and I was very sad then because I had seen all the investment in tourism and the loss of the cultural connection with looking after the cattle, the transhumans and the growing of crops was already showing itself as, a, as dying. And now it sounds from the videos and the pictures that the community is finding it very difficult to come together again. That, that, photo, that photograph of before and after just tells it all, just how devastating. And I and some friends were funding um, a young Langtanger uh, in Kathmandu at university, and he had returned for the celebration of the Gompa, which I believe was, had happened just the weekend before the earthquake. And he was one of those who was killed. So I feel sorry about that too. I'm going back to see. I have not given any of my money towards Langtang yet. I'm going back to see what they need, what will bring the community together. And I am asking my, all my friends who were here in Langtang in 1976, we're, we're going to donate our, our photographs because we've got a, a lot of photographs. This year it's really nice. I mean, it's something different. We got to see more about women and LGBTQ, which is just quite refreshing. I've been following it for the past couple of years, I think, and I've actually attended a workshop before. I didn't, I didn't get the chance to do it this time, but even despite that, I really liked all the exhibits, all the stories, especially about women this time, yeah. I think it's a really good thing that like it's out in the open for everyone to see that people like don't have to you know buy tickets to go through it. It's some some things like uh, especially yeah, both women and like sexuality and LGBTQ like feminism. It's not really openly discussed. Um, it's something that like you know as a society we sweep under the rug and just like get on with it. It's like this unspoken thing. But once it's out in the open, it's like you know you have to see it whether you like it or not because it's there and it's really good that like it's getting exposure in this way i really enjoyed the hippie uh, side like i've always had a soft spot for that period of time i have always wondered what it was like to be born at that time in Kathmandu. like my grandparents were here at that time i think but like you know to see to be able to see glimpses of that culture like right in the streets that we're walking in like it happened right here it was really really cool I wish I was a part of that, but I guess I got to be a part of it, like in this, in its own, like in my own way. <laughs>